Hello, Welsh Forest Focus. It's not been a great season, but it was a great night last night for Nottingham Forest as they beat Fulham 3-1 at the City Ground. We'll discuss the winning fall, the players that stood out, the trip to Spurs and the state of the relegation battle in the company of, first of all, Reds fan Greg Mitchell. Afternoon, Greg. How are you doing? Good. Very good. Yeah, ready to go. No doubt, no doubt, indeed. It's nice to talk about a win. Second guest today, well, I must confess, I was scrambling around like Forrest on transfer deadline day this morning, trying to find someone to bail me out because Kelvin had to drop out, uh, unfortunately. So who do you call? Send out the bat signal and who answers but David Prutton. Prutz, how are you doing? I'm all right. Even <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very well. Thank you for, for being... Or making me feel 14th choice, just like when I was playing. As he looks down the subs bench, going, "Not you, not you, not you, not you, not you, not you." Kit man, no, let's go. Get on, get, get yourself on. But no, I'm glad to be here. What a lovely time to talk about Forest, considering what we saw last night. Indeed, indeed. I mean, I did ask you on last week, but you said your son had training, and uh, he did. I, and I we did were... say to you, "It's good. He's got his granddad's footballing talent." So it, absolutely, that's that is. I mean, that's so apt. That's correct. He, he is this man here, Brian O'Neill, who played for Southampton with Mick Shannon in the seventies, and was a very, very good footballer. Um, that the one underneath it is uh, is me with long hair pointing at a nutter at Millwall. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, 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 I'm getting none of them right, am I? Let's let's be brutally honest. Christ. But yes, we were there this morning. He did his bit. Uh, I obviously missed the goal that he scored when you texted me to say, can you come and do this? But he'll get over it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Proud dad moment we're in. Sorry. <laughs> right. Uh, 300 people with us inside two minutes was great. And we haven't discussed the game at all yet. So, Greg, kick us off. How are you feeling? Oh, like I said, we haven't won many games. So to win one and to play like that. It must be feeling pretty good this morning or this afternoon now. All the talk last week was about we've got to start quick. We've got to choose. He's got to choose an attacking formation. He's got to do all this, that, the other. And Nuno did everything that we all wanted. <laughs> and the players, God, I've never seen a first half like that. Gibbs White is 10 out of 10. Just superb. And you were almost disappointed. Well, you were disappointed. It was only three, which obviously brought the worry in that this could all go wrong, being the, the season we've had so far. So just an incredible performance, that first half that didn't get everything it deserved, to be honest, which is crazy when you're going at 3-0. We've had some comments on this this video before, but uh, I mean, I'll put this one up. But Greg, Mitchell, you are a god, <laughs> says Stephen Dines. Thanks to all you do for our club. That's in reference uh, to Forza's display. And we will I come can't. back to that. And <clears throat> yeah. Go on, what are you going to say? You can't no, we'll come back to it. I can't take too much credit for last night, I must admit. Uh, <laughs> let's also thank, just quickly, a couple of new members. Uh, Shell, Hunter, Ant, Gel, and Dan Beard. Good to have you with us and thanks for the support. I suppose, perhaps, when you see us play like that, some of the football mm. played first half, played Fulham off the park. I guess the feeling is now that's got to be the blueprint for how we play in the remaining seven games, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean that, that would be the ideal scenario, setting a template like that and then and then living up to it between now and the end of the season. Because I think when you start playing the what if game and and, and what a hypothetical season looks like, you think if Forest played like that more, more often than not, you're talking about top ten at least, really, aren't you? Because they made a, a very good Fulham side over the course of the season look very, very ordinary. I think you, you do sometimes get those games where it really does click. And from a fan's point of view, and we, we've discussed it on here many, many times, when you talk about what you want to see from the team from a selection point of view and an application point of view and a starting of the game point of view, three massive boxes ticked. Um, they had too much in every single sense of the word in the opening half an hour, didn't they, for Fulham? Tactically, they were better. Technically, they were better. They made better decisions in possession. They looked quicker across the field. They snapped into tackles better. And they look solidly uh, defensive. So, so much to like about it um, and so much to take from it, as you say, Matt, moving between now and the end of the season. I think well, as we come on to the talking points that we kind of discussed prior to coming on here, the the frustration that comes from the runner games leading up to this would be, well, why can't you do this all the time? Well, that's the reason why Forrest are where they are in the division. It's because they don't do this more often than not. So that is the next step, that's a bit further down the end, the evolution of a side that can do this more often than it can. But right now, it's it's a peak. And absolutely, the next port of call is don't follow it with a trough. Do not 
mess up the good work done over Easter to then do something uh, that puts you in jeopardy, be jeopardy between now and the season. But let's focus on the positives, gang. My God, they were brilliant. They were absolutely brilliant. And then even as, as you watch the second half and Silver made changes um, and there was a bit more pressure. I was listening to the commentary um, watching an inferior sports channel to Sky Sports because that's the only way you could watch it. Um, and, and, I, and I know the, the commentary team very well and the lovely fellas. Um, it, it just seemed like that it felt like there was an enhancement of the jeopardy that you actually probably didn't feel in the ground. Does that make sense? You kind of, oh, Fulham are going close. Well, yeah, a couple of times, but not, not, I didn't feel like backs to the wall for Forrest to get over the line, unless I've misread the vibe of what I saw with my own eyes. They looked like they were getting tested defensively, but it wasn't that case of, of uh, I mean, Fulham, Fulham could be back in the game easily. I, I never thought. I thought Forrest did so much well. And as Greg says, three... Three goals potentially um, is a disappointment given the chances that Forrest had um, over the course of the 90 minutes. Yeah, I thought that's great. Shout out to TNT Sports because Fletcher is a big part of our show. Uh, I did enjoy Adam <laughs> Summerton's commentary and Martin Keogh. There you go. Keeping everyone happy. <laughs> and Greg was enjoying Sky Sports highlights packages. He yes, Greg. Morning. Good lad. There you go. So we'll pick up on that then, Greg, around nerves because I was terrified second half. Because <laughs> Absolutely. So we'll, we'll come to that. So, yeah, how did you find it watching it? Horrendous. Like, it's <laughs> it's Forest, and we knew what Fulham had done to Sheffield United. Mm. Granted, we're better than Sheffield. Field United, but how many times it 21 points from winning positions? You know, we we would if you're saying you're not nervous even in the 93rd minute, then uh, I don't know, maybe you've not watched enough of us, <laughs> but it was it wasn't good. Like I thought, oh no, oh no. And we did manage it so well when you watch it back. We did. We there was no need to be nervous, you know, it's just the way the way we are being forest fans and, and what we've we've been through recently you expect the worst but they just did so well because Fulham did come out after 30 minutes you know once they turfed poor Wilson off which was quite hilarious but uh, yeah they did change <laughs> and uh, they changed for the better for them and it gave them some hope and they did exactly what they'd have wanted to do by scoring early in the second half and your heart sinks doesn't it you think oh gosh here we go please no not this time just once and they did it. They delivered. Nuno delivered. They didn't panic. The players from, you know, from the goalkeeper to defence, there wasn't a poor performance last night. There genuinely wasn't. Gibbs White was clear man of the match, but, mm. you know, there were seven or eight superb performances, like performances of the season that, that all came from at once from, from numerous players. You know, Murillo was superb. Some of his forward passing is just incredible, isn't it? Um you know, Nico Williams showing again why his potential... Well, I think he is the most improved player this season. He's just been fantastic. His, his attacking ability as well and his way he wants to get that goal. It's just... It's exciting and it's just even more a reason that we're desperate to, to get away from this bottom three, stay up and build carefully and cautiously for next season because... <laughs> If we stay up, I can genuinely see this this team just going from strength to strength. We've got some absolute gems in there. And last night was the first time in a long while we saw them all work together. Mm. Yeah, and I was completely relaxed for the last 20 seconds once Anthony Robinson handballed <laughs> it in the box. <laughs> I thought we probably won then. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, I mean, that's in, in a game like that, when, when you do, as, as Greg talks about managing the game, and like I said, the... the, the Statistically, you could look at it a certain way, but I didn't see panic stations. I didn't see uh, players thrashing at things or looking overtly wild. And when that when that um, when that is given at the end, Matt, and you just know that that's the game done, isn't it? it, it there is that collective um, kind of uh, changing the gears because you know that collectively um, you, you've done a job. And when I mean collectively, I mean with regards to what you see on the pitch, but going back to what um, we spoke about with the with the Garibaldi display and all that, and watching it, it, it's one of the few grounds. I'm not just saying this because it's it's a Forest podcast, where when you're watching it on telly, you can feel the atmosphere coming through. A lot, there's a lot of football nowadays. This is a broader debate about what sets what who who goes first, the, the performance or the fans. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes everyone's looking at each other, going, "It's you lot," so you need to get a start. But it, it, I think from what I've seen and in the crunch moments that I've seen from Forest fans over the last few years, 
when that call is put out there, my word, do they step up. That, that is, it's just an awesome display of solidarity and togetherness. That we talk about the, the 12th man, and I think it really, it, it absolutely does help. You're not telling me that Morgan Gibbs White doesn't flourish in a hot environment like that where it, the, the people just revel in what he can do. The, the goal that he's, the, the, the one two goal that you score, and, and, and you almost kind of, there is almost a bit of disbelief around the ground because you're going, my God, this is brilliant. And I don't mean that in a condescending way because Forest have players capable of doing that. Chris Wood's goal. I've never seen him pass the ball into the net from outside the box, giving half their defence the eyes and just kind of going, yeah, do it all the time. Yeah, of course you do. It was done in such a wonderfully skillful, nonchalant way that it, it gives a real insight into what the ability of these players is. Now, the, the bigger debate about that comes, does that consistency come of that type of talent and that type of display? Because then you're talking about a team or individuals that should be playing in the top eight in the Premier League. That's absolutely where you put players that play like that completely because they made Fulham look ordinary. Um, but again, that collective um, effort, that's exactly what it was, that collective effort to get Forrest over the line. In such a key game, given the points deduction, given how quickly the turnaround is when it comes to Easter games, to write that specific wrong pretty swiftly, I think, mate, it's just for an all-round wonderful night of football. Uh, yeah, very well said. Uh, thank you to uh, John Cole for becoming a member, Paul Galt for becoming a member, and very much to uh, Paul Kilburn for donating ten pounds uh, with a very kind message. Uh, if you're back to train for a marathon, drop a link in Paul if you're collecting for charity, and I'll give that uh, a plug as well. Um, which this is a wider football point as well, but I do hope like football fans aren't priced out. Uh, the ones that make the noise. This isn't a forest thing. This is a, a wider football point. Just the prices of tickets are getting pretty mental now. Uh, to, to, uh, the, to a couple of ones that I heard in recent um, weeks, um, there's the over 65s at Spurs, isn't there, where they turn the backs on the 65th minute to to um, to um, protest against that. And then the Palace one, which was taking away concessions for armed forces, key workers, etc., which, if you go by what they were saying on TalkSport in the car yesterday, is going to make Palace 25 grand. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Which yeah. we all know is a lot of money, but when probably half the players on are probably earning that in about two or three days in a week, come on. that, mm. that and, and all that stuff. There was another article that I read where we talked to, it, it, it talked about what football looked like out of COVID, uh, when in COVID, which was crap. Without the fans, you, you've, it's, it's, something's got to be done to keep them all together. I've, something's got to be done. Yeah, go on, Greg. Do you want to come in on that? Uh, just it was just on the fans, really. We all know that you know it's the only real business where you could double ticket prices tomorrow, and some of these stadiums would still sell out. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. why it's such a weird business model mm -hmm. where you can't get a new customer, you can't move to a a different place and it's why clubs have to be so careful that they don't push fans too far we've seen it in germany where the fans just won't take it you know and they protest and they get things changed because mm -hmm. they have genuine power over there the premier league and the english setup fans don't really have a, a real say so it is it is just something that you know i think the only way it will change is like a a voice that everyone's on the same page and i don't think I don't think Forrest will take the mick like that. I think they appreciate just how important the uh, the thirteenth man is, as Morgan Gibbs White said last night. Is that and, what uh, he said? <laughs> Do we well, think he meant to say yeah, that? Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> thinking he was being clever, and he knew okay. Turner was the twelfth uh, man for his little time wasting trick. <laughs> he got his yellow card, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, going back to I think. <laughs> this one should just be about the positives and save that one for another day. Mm. And uh, it was just uh, that one really made me laugh with Turner and <laughs> Gibbs White's Radio Nottingham interview after the game was fantastic. So he was just absolutely buzzing and more of that. We need more of it. I suppose one of the things I wrote in the notes as well, perhaps, this is a real mm -hmm. positive, but it is a bit of a frustration as well. When you look at the bottom of the league, I don't think there's any other team down there apart from maybe Brentford with Tony and, and, Bru and Bumo, that could play a team off the park and win like that. If Everton and Luton win, it's a real scrappy battle. Mm. Forrest can turn it on like that, which is great, but is it equally yeah. a kind of a frustration that we've only won seven games this season we could have 
could have won much more, really. Uh, but again, it, it goes back to the, the players that you're looking at that are actually in the side. And like I said, I, I, I don't say that to, to kind of, what's the word? No, it kind of sounds like the word, but to talk, to talk about the, the, the players that we're talking about um, and what you're suggesting you get from them, if you had a team that was made up of players that had bundles of games uh, at a team in the top half of the Premier League, then I would agree that there'd be a frustration there because then you would expect more and should get more delivered. Collectively, again, with the greatest respect, it's a bottom half Premier League squad. So that's what you're going to get. You're going to get frustration. You're going to get wonderful games like that. You're going to get other games where you're kind of tearing your hair up going, Christ, lads, what on earth is going on? Um, the 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 fallibility at set pieces is, again, something we're going to talk about. And I've seen a couple of comments from, from people watching on. Must be, it, it, it's 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 shocking at times when you, that's one of, literally by definition of a set piece, it's one of the only positions in the game that you can set up <laughs> and plan for, right? He's going to stand there, he's going to do this, the ball's going to get whipped in here. This, lad, this is what you need to do. Once again, the fallibility is shown last night. Um, so I understand if you are sat there as a Forest fan thinking, wish we could do this every week, but you're not going to do it every week because the players at that level that can do that every week, that level of football every week, play for a team in the top six, top seven, top eight, because that's what they do. They get paid for consistency, not because they're Maradona or Messi or Pele or anything like that. They get paid for consistency. Um, so that's why Forrest, in this evolutionary period, hopefully of staying in the Premier League, that's when you then bring the squad on, where you bring players in that can do that more often than they can, that they can um, perform like that all the time. That's what that's what then brings a squad on. I mean, there's a wider debate in about how you actually pay for that, given the current rules. Um, but I can understand that frustration, but that's what it is. A team that is in the bottom half of the Premier League is inherently inconsistent. Uh, yes, as Dan says, quoting, channeling Gary Bertels here, great players and good players, the difference is consistency, and that's true. Uh, a good start as well <laughs> around that is um, Elanga. Mark Southerns was saying yesterday at the post-match stream, Elanga's had more big chances since Nuno came in than any other player in the midfielder in the Premier League, including Salah, if you count him as a midfielder, and Saka. He's had 11 big chances, but he's only scored two of them, which quite kind of sums up where we are. We can turn it on and we can, can fall uh, a little bit short. Ooh. I've just knocked. Oh, it's a little. Uh, oh, it's a Wes Morgan Russian doll, not a Morgan Gibbs white one. It's really old. I think I might have one of you prots from back in well, the day. I mean, here. Is that obviously what Russian dolls are? Do you, who's the biggest one that you start with, and what do you work your way down to? Do you start with like a Wes and end up with a Rob Earnshaw? Is, is that how it works? I don't know where the rest end. of them are. Actually, <laughs> I love how excited. Got these in Prague. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd lost them for years. There's a Jack Lester one, I remember. I don't, I don't think there's a David Pro. There's one. a Jack Lester one that's constantly throwing himself on the floor winning penalties. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, just a quick word. A couple of people, I'll do this really quick so I'll forget otherwise, about the ref. We did mention this last night. Mike Oliver was really good. And it makes a good, a real difference actually having the best ref in the league. Uh, I don't think he got anything particularly wrong that I can think of, including that Nico penalty appeal, which... Probably wasn't a penalty. I don't think it was anyway. So, yeah, fair play to him. Uh, and just quickly, Greg, team selection as well. We've we've really, you know, put the boot in on Nuno a bit on this podcast. And you want him to be more attacking. And we'll get into Danilo and Dominguez and stuff like that. But generally, this was the right team to go with, wasn't it? Unleash that front four and they see what they can do. Mm. On Michael Oliver, that's his job. So that's as far as the, uh, oh, the compliments go. <laughs> um, yeah, Nuno, um, I tell you, he was under pressure. He really was under pressure. And you could tell some of the fans weren't happy with what's going on. You, you can feel when it's building around the ground. And he, in four days, has got that points deduction wiped out. He's done everything we asked of him. He's learned from from the the poor well the not so great display against palace he's um he's learned and he's shown what this team can do under him and we've only seen it probably three or four times with him this season um and so you've got to give him credit for that he i think he got his game plan right he he got the substitutions right he he pretty much had a, a faultless performance from the side so absolutely credit where it's credit 
do. And if he continues, then there'll be no doubt he's in that seat next season. But yeah, he's, he's a manager under pressure and probably deservedly so. And if he puts in what he did last night for them players, then he won't have to worry for long. A uh, quick word for our sponsors, as ever, the Trent Navigation. Uh, here we go. If you sign up for Fancy League, you can win two tickets to a T20 game at Trent Bridge this summer. League code, if you haven't signed up already, lowercase L-Y-4-U-G-8. L-Y-4-U-G-8. Are you in this, Greg? Are you bother to sign up? I keep forgetting to play. I always get the little notification and think I must do that. But, yeah, I mean, my team looks after itself. You have to manage it a few times a season, don't you? <laughs> yeah, that's how you play it well. Just so if you ever want week. any tips. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to the on-the-pitch action then. We touched on Morgan Gibbs-White's performance. Um, Greg doesn't want to talk about the Forza banner, I'm sure, but I do think it must have inspired him. Perhaps if, you know, imagine if someone had done that for you, uh, you know, that giant banner. I mean, if you're looking at that on the pitch, it must look. It just says sod off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like Jesus. <laughs> you are not fit to wear the shirt. Yeah. Oh no! Come on. <laughs> I can see that. I mean, I, I would gladly take that on the chin. I would think that would be very funny. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean with with more because again, he, he's been a player that we've chatted about for so long, and when things haven't been going great, and there's been. Um, his his way of playing, which in a team that has struggled at times, um, it shows that it's it's something that we appreciate about Morgan in a game such as that, but can frustrate when the game's not necessarily going for us. Which, uh, but he's there to take chances, isn't he? If you look at the way that the team's structured, um, the way that the team's set up, and a lot's made about the fact that Morgan and, and Nuno crossed paths before, but. This incarnation of Morgan is one that's clearly very comfortable in the Premier League. Clearly a player that can affect a football match in the Premier League. Um, and he, he plays in a way which I... Envy is not the word, but I I was pure concentration and hard work. Whereas Morgan looks like it just flows out of him when he's doing it uh, in, in his best possible incarnation. And it's a joy to watch, isn't he? An absolute joy to watch. Um, and I think... I think Forest fans broadly would have someone there that's a real favourite in the most recent seasons of what it, football is about. It's about getting yourself on, getting on the edge of your seat. It's about being able to pitch yourself um, and, and dream about what it is to be in the red shirt. And someone like Morgan plays in the way that you would love to play uh, in a football match. So I, I think it can only inspire him. Again, the 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 the, um, the main theme of what we've said so far is it's wonderful. But it's the consistency that needs to come out of that, that isn't it? And, and you want Morgan being able to do that every single game uh, to facilitate him to play in every, in every single game such as that. Because to sit in, to see possession and hit teams on the counter, even though you are at home, there's your blueprint between now and the end of the season. Obviously, take a look at the teams that Forrest is going to come up against. But it, it, the, the Spurs game screams of doing something like that, doesn't it? Being comfortable enough to say, we're not going to have that much of the ball but when we do get it, we've got the quality to be able to attack the opposition at pace um, and with real creativity to, to cause them some, some problems. So and Morgan's the absolute beating heart of that type of thing. There's, there's, di there's different players that bring different things. Ryan Yates is a player that I've mentioned before because I've got a lot of time for him. He brings something completely different. Chris Wood brings something completely different. Um, Maria brings something completely different. Danilo, it, it's, it's about being able to fit that jigsaw together. And as Greg says, Nuna got it. Absolutely spot on, didn't he? And in these kind of times when it has been a little bit more tough, sometimes the demeanour of the manager doesn't quite help. He's he's not he's not the most effusive fellow when it comes to speaking to him, is he? But you can tell he's got the respect and the command of the group. And in a game such as that, that set, that sets the benchmark. Uh, I've, uh, it was a bit mean, but Prez knows he's one of my favourite players coming <laughs> coming through on this uh, podcast yeah. today. That makes it all right today. He just <laughs> <laughs> You're not helping, Greg. <laughs> uh, going back to Morgan, Greg, as well. Like uh, last season, we saw him play those kind of out foot, outside of the boot through balls to Brennan to set up chances, and that was back last night. And just the way he played against Polina, who to me, second only to Rodri and Rice, probably good, good player, three defensive, yeah, defensive midfielders mm. in the league. He couldn't get near him. I don't know. Obviously, he had an off night, but that quality of performance 
just sets Morgan apart when he's on it, doesn't it, Greg? I guess. Yeah, he he made him have an off night, I'd say. And and the weird thing is with Gibbs White, he's still quite a Marmite character. You know, when you when the team comes out and he's a must start, he's the first name on the sheet for me and has been for for the entire season. But he still frustrates people, and I think part of that reason is everything goes through him. So of course, there's going to be visible mistakes with a player like him. But when you play as well as you played yesterday, and I heard it on the post match stream. Suddenly, we're talking about he played that well last night. That was an England performance. <laughs> and I know you mentioned it, and I know it was a one-off, but if you're looking at games and performances, that was just incredible. Everything went through him. The through balls he played, the ball, it, just the way it came off his boot with, with zero time to do things and his link-up play with... I mean, it used to just be him and Jono, but it was him and Danilo, him and Choi, him and Elanga, even Wood. Like, he was just, everything was going through him. And, I mean, it, it was unquestionably, for me, his best performance in a Forest shirt. Um, deserved of everything that came before for him and the, and the man of the match. It was just incredible to watch. And if he continues to play like that, it's it's too late for the summer for him. There's too many players above, but if he has another season where he, he improves like he is doing, then he is going to be in that England setup, and he deserved to be in it. I do think Danilo's a key factor in it as well, Prots. The midfield balance wasn't really right with Yates and Sangare, but adding that athleticism, mm. and as Greg says, the link-up for the third goal was brilliant. And Danilo probably typifies what you were saying around consistency, perhaps more than anyone, because he can be like that and he can be, you know, pretty poor. But just that bright balance in midfield and Yates as well. I thought Yates was great last night. Uh, you know, that was why managers pick Yates, I guess, wasn't it? That warrior performance. Yeah, like I said, everyone brings different things. And and if you if you if you start comparing Ryan to other midfielders in the Premier League that's where sometimes the comparison lets people down because when Forrest play like that he's good for Forrest doing that which is fine because he's a Forrest player so that's that's how you kind of quantify what uh, Ryan brings to the side Danilo's energy right if I remember right it was him charging forward right near the end and and that he had no support so he's gone for a nip of shot yeah. and then the next thing you see him running back past the camera back into defense back into the heart of the midfield to 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 get back so so that Again, that overall desire, does that, and it's, sometimes it's tough to use the word desire because that suggests that in other games, Forest players haven't cared, which is, is patently rubbish because they all care about, selfishly, they all care about being Premier League footballers. The collective does come with that, but believe me, footballers are very, very selfish people. It's about being a, a professional footballer in the Premier League. So that that's and that then feeds into how well Forest do. But I think you're absolutely right. That that dynamic between the two of them, allowing those players in front of them to go and express themselves, is absolutely what a a midfielder such as Ryan would love to do. You know what I mean? He, he, he seems to be a very self-aware player that knows his place, what he's capable of. The manager would have told him exactly what, he's, what he needs from that type of player. And between himself and Danilo, whether it's something that's discussed on the training field or whether it's something that they've come to work out second-naturedly together is great. But as long as there's more of those, then then there aren't. We've we've seen um, games. I remember coming on after we the, the West Ham game, where you looked at the game thinking, "Christ, these all look like strangers. These 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 players do not look like they're on the same page whatsoever." Which again, that's that's the low. Last night's the high. It, you need to, what you need to do is bridge that a little bit, so you are kind of up towards the upper reaches of their ability. Yes, these games are great. But in the, these last remaining games, to get Forest over the line, it's got to be up here. They can't, have that, they can't be that swing. Regardless of who they're playing, Spurs looking to finish in the Champions League places, they've shown that they're fallible this season. Can't be scared of what Spurs have got to offer because now confidence bridges that gap in quality, I think, between a team that's looking to make sure that they're safe and a team looking to get in the Champions League places. Uh, great to have 600 people with us live. If you haven't already, do us a favour and hit like on the video. It does uh, help spread the word. Um, Chris Wood, I want to talk about, obviously, not just the quality of his goal, Greg, but that's 11 goals this season. And there's some stats doing the rounds about how accurate his shooting is. I was looking earlier. I, uh, Mark was saying he's got 47% shot conversion under Nuno. Over the course of the season, it's 39%, I think, uh, of shots on goals end up in the back of the net. Uh, goals per shot on target, 65%, which is ridiculous. So for comparison, I was it's looking amazing. at this season. 
Yeah, Callum Wilson, 17%. Ollie Watkins, 18%. Bearing in mind, Chris Wood is 39% here. Ivan Tony, 11%. Mo Salah, 16%. Uh, Son, who I think personally is the best finisher in the league, now Harry Kane's gone, 21%, and Erling Haaland, 16%. I mean, when you see those stats, Greg, that, that's mental, isn't it? That, you know, And the, it sums up how he put that goal away last night, I guess. Confidence is a player that's playing off confidence and to shoot from 30 yards. And one of those angles genuinely made it look like I could have scored that. It was incredible. <laughs> He's, no, he did. He, he made it look know, so easy. Simple, yeah. yeah, and that's just how good he is at the minute, how in form he is, his confidence. He scored arguably two goals of the season within four days. They're, they're both going to be in contention when you look at mm. Forest goals. I know we haven't had loads, but <laughs> those two goals were superb. His goal at is probably going to get the top three. Um Absolutely warranting the discussion of an extension. Like, absolutely, he's key to us at the minute and his goals are what's going to keep us up. Um, and, yeah, I, from it, I was thinking last night, that conversation I had with a Newcastle fan before the game up in Newcastle, that they were going to win 2-0. Couldn't believe how they'd added pants down with Chris Wood for £15 million. And he was a lovely bloke, this Newcastle fan. He was a genuinely great guy. We were in their home pub. But after the game up at Newcastle, that's all I could think about. And I was thinking about him last night as well, because I bet he can't believe what he's seen from, from the guy. And long may it continue. Give him another year. Thoroughly deserves it. And he's that reliable player that we absolutely need at the minute. We did. We discussed this on Monday, Prots, about his contract. Mm. Uh, so I want to get your take on it as well. I mean, it's it feels like a no-brainer now. I know he's 32 and his hamstring might go occasionally, but... Surely you have to try and keep him next season, don't you? It's so. Is that how that so the stipulate his contract does just literally run out at the end of the season? That's that's yeah. it. That's okay. Yeah. I, I mean, from what you hear, it's a it's a pretty good contract. <laughs> But yeah, it? yeah, pretty good. Yeah, he's, he's not <laughs> yeah. struggling by his old oh, Chrissy Wood, and and uh, quite rightly so. Um, I think. Uh, yeah, I would say that. I mean, it's. I was trying to look, draw a comparison potentially with the Jesse Lingard situation, which I, I, I'll throw that straight on my shoulder because that's rubbish. He, he did nothing in a Forest shirt. And um, what Chris has brought, the goals that you're talking about, the stats that you're talking about as well, obviously stats are are, are there either to kind of, um, you know what I mean? It, it's 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 akin to a, a tramp leaning on a, on a, on a lamppost. It's, it's either for... <laughs> It's either for illumination or just support. You know what I mean? It, it's it, it, that's that's the way you can you can interpret stats sometimes. But his numbers speak for themselves. It's um, it, a player that's scoring at this level, you, you, and he's in the building, and he knows what Forest want to do. He's got a manager that likes him, um, and and in theory, you you would possibly have first dibs on him. Would I, he's definitely someone that you could have in the squad? Yes, there was frustrations when he's been out the side with injuries, but managing well. Possibly look at bringing someone else in with, I don't know, youth on his side. But I think what Chris Wood has done, and you'd mentioned the Newcastle fan, Greg, with regards to what their interpretation of what Chris Wood is. I saw him at Leeds become the top scorer in the Championship, and quite rightly earned a move to the Premier League. Um, and I don't think he's looked out of place there at all. He's not Erling Haaland, but he's also, I don't know, not Neil Mopo, is he? So, you know what I mean? He, he, scores, he, he scores goals at this level key goals at this level. Um, so I, I, I think it does. it is falling into kind of no-brainer category when it comes to keeping somebody like that. And who, again, without without being too twee about it, seems a good part of the squad as well. Seems a, a likeable member of the squad. Doesn't doesn't go around dropping bombs and causing trouble. Um, so I think if, if the figures work, which again might be something that comes into it from Forrest's point of view moving forward with regards to how that is all worked out, the figures work, then I, I would definitely do do your utmost to keep Chris. Yeah, uh, people in the con comments are rightly pointing out uh, about length of the contract is probably an issue because I guess Forrest Greg aren't going to want to give him three years or necessarily no, even two he, years. He's not necessarily going to get his eighty grand a week anywhere, no. is he it's, now? It's he, he might it Greg, yeah, like that, it, it, it might. It, it might sound, and again, yeah, that's. I mean, Matt, that's a great point. We because it is the best league on the planet and not just saying that because Forrester in it and we're all English people watching this oh sorry oh, taking part in this it is the best league in the planet it's it's mm. wonderful it's got the most money in it barring obviously Saudi which is throwing 
ridiculous money uh, from uh, ridiculous players. So may maybe maybe there's a swan song there for Chris Wood. And if I'm brutally honest, if I'm brutally honest, if you got to 32 and Forrest either say, stay in the Premier League, take a bit of a pay cut, but we love having you around. Mm -hmm. And someone from Saudi comes in and says, there's three times what you're on already for, I don't know, a quarter of the work and pressure. The cynic, the cynic would go, I can see why you do it, mate. I really can see why you do it. Nights like that last night, that'll never that that isn't replicated around world football. Maybe Bundesliga games to some degree, or or some some of the La Liga games. Nights like that, Premier League nights like that, that they, they exist only in the Premier League. So that that would be the key thing to try and drag him in. But it's it's a good point that you both make with regards to what where he does go and what he does stick around for. And as you say, Greg. Oh, sorry, as I, as I was saying to you, Greg. Um, incentivize players of that age, mm. you know what I mean? Make them want to be on the pitch, make them want to score goals. Might be easier said than done, but that's potentially how you work that kind of contract, I think. Yeah. And one thing about the Saudi league is that we've seen players don't actually, quite publicly, don't seem to like it. I know that obviously they love the money, but Jordan Henderson got out quickly. Really hot is that? Like, did, you, did you know that? <laughs> and they don't necessarily get the money when they say they're going to get it. But you, yeah. you know, with Wood as well, like he's getting to that age where he's thinking about after his career and talking of incentivizing, you know, rather than his 80 grand, you know, 30 grand <laughs> a week for two years in a coaching role or something like that. There's options, isn't he? Whilst he's in this hot form and he's dragged himself around some of the uh, the doldrums of this uh, football pyramid with your mill, mill walls and Leeds, I had the. Uh, yeah, he deserves a nice little retirement in uh, Nottingham for his final year. Uh, thank you very much to Lee Tilston uh, for the £5, very kindly. It's not the first time you donated, so that's very good of you and appreciate that. Um, moving backwards through the pitch, and we've discussed forwards and midfield. Uh, Defence, uh, I was going to come central defence, but a lot of people are pointing out about the fullbacks. Obviously, Nico Williams, Greg, but Olerena, um it's ironic, Fulham away was one of the worst you did that post-match products actually the, the, the next day Olerena's performance at Fulham if you recall I think you described as one of the worst you've seen from a fullback possibly ever um, <laughs> and for him to play like that and continue his redemption arc I'll dig it out for us um but that, was, that sounds know, like uh, what I'd say actually because I'm, I'm horrible but yeah that well that was the one where the owner chucked his passing in the yeah bush, well, I think you described out. as the, mo the most passive performance you've seen from was, a player yeah they, yeah I mean but to a man they were crap they were terrible Awful yeah. night. But mm. yeah, but he the way he played last night, Greg, um, you know, you've got to say fair play to him. I think he's been really good and another player who I really hope is in the shirt next season as well. What about you? I don't feel like there was a player on that pitch last night who I mean, obviously Spurs were gonna have to play differently, but who would have dropped themselves for the next home game? Every single one of them earned their shirt last night. So <laughs> if they're all fit, that that team for me starts against Wolves, even though they are a slightly different setup. And I know as one of them. And when you're starting from the back like that with that forward thinking mind, it just it creates what that hurt first half delivered. And having him and Nico either side was the was the engine that starts that ridiculous wave after wave of attacking. Yeah, I think so. Some of the points he's pointing out, this this always sparks a debate about terrible performances. Joel Lynch at Derby, do you remember that one, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the great the great thing about this is, um, and such is the wonderful <laughs> thing about discussing football, and it this it just does that promotes debate, doesn't it? It's like, no, I've seen yeah. someone worse than that. <laughs> Why do we punish ourselves? <laughs> it's amazing. By reflecting it's back amazing. on games. Like I, that. I managed to like erase all these horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't remember. Well, no, it's because you're an uh, eternal optimist, Greg. We love yeah. it. Uh, Shane Courtney, thank you very much for the uh, membership. Very kind of you as well. Good to have lots or yeah, donation of the membership. I should bong say. against bong, bong at home against Charles. <laughs> oh yeah, come on, wrong let's. <laughs> We're we going off on tangents, but yeah, that's a, that's a fair show. Yeah, there's a few. Uh, let's talk about very, central very defense. Then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, New Party versus Villa, not that long ago. <laughs> that was like three weeks ago. He moved center half in the second half, didn't he? So, you can't really uh, say about that, right? Uh, central yeah, well. defense. Um, a lot of people saying about you can't play two 21 year olds together, perhaps with Omar Bamadeli and uh, Murillo. 
Um, <laughs> again, I mean, if they play can well, you keep saying that if they're <laughs> playing well, Omar Bamadeli is pretty consistent. Apart from that goal mm. at Villa, I can't think we're making many ricks for us. Can we keep playing those two together? Yeah, like I said, you can if they're playing well. But they're, they're they're growing into the partnership. Um, that sense of need and experience. Um, you've got, I think, to a degree, experience either side of them, given the football that the, those two lads have played. And if you've got uh, Ryan and, and Danilo playing in the way that he's playing in front of them, plus you've got Sells, who's who's seemingly finding his feet in all senses of the word in goal, then that I think that's fine. I think it's fine. I, I, I don't think there's they don't play, and they, I mean. I've seen more of uh, Omar Bamadali than I have of Mario. He's got plenty of football under his belt. So um, if that to come away from me, if you're good enough, you're old enough. It, they've got enough minutes on the pitch to be able to manage expectation and the, the games that they've got coming up. And I think with this, I, I think they've earned the right to play together. They've earned, the, as Greg says, earned the right to keep the spot completely and n- not saying in a fatalistic way, you just wait till they make a mistake, but you you to get more out of these players, you've got to play them together. You can't keep chopping and changing. You can't just drop one in, drop one out for no reason. The the there's, 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 there's maybe a bit more of a, of a of a kind of deep dive into how you set the team up to play a Spurs side um, away from home. But the commonsensical, straightforward way is going back to Greg's point. I mean, you do well to drop any of the players that played last night. You you do really well because. The chemistry was good. The energy was good. Yes, it was a test towards the end of the second half, but they came through with flying colours. They beat a team that's beaten decent teams across the course of the season. So I, I think without sounding too old-fashioned that you you stick with what you've got. And if, if it's two 21-year-olds that are performing, doesn't matter how old they are. I'll tell you my, my one worry about it, Greg, is not a slice on, on Omar Bamadali at all, but just the way we defend set pieces, which we'll come on to, is so bad that I kind of mm. feel like do you need Willy Bully in there just for someone? And that's probably one of the reasons Ryan Yates played last night as well. Because mm. I was thinking, if Yates didn't play and Dominguez played, the only players we would have had to head away corners were Wood, Omar Bamadeli, and um, Murillo. Because we ended up with more Gibbs White marking uh, their goal scorer, tossing for the first goal. Uh, what's going on there? So that's kind of two questions in one, I guess, Greg, around Bolly and just the way we defend set pieces is still a nightmare, frankly, isn't it? I don't think Bali replaces Omar Baladeli because uh, of set pieces. I don't think one player changes how we defend set pieces. We just haven't been good enough all season, mm. uh, no matter who's been there. You know, we've tried every single setup and we're still second worst in the league, I think, at set pieces. twenty Over 20 goals now, 21 goals against, is it? I think then it's Brentford at 28 or something like that. Um, It's horrendous and you have no confidence. And that's why teams like Fulham last night, it was a ridiculous stat about how many crosses they tried to get in. But last night, you know, with all those balls coming in, only one snuck through. So that is a a good positive Mm. sign. And I am... I was having a good discussion with Emma, actually, who was a big fan of his, saying he should come in instead of um, Felipe. And he absolutely proved people like her right last night. And there was talk of him being the kind of player who could be a future captain at Forest. Because I think, I mean, he's a young player, but you would kind of say Murillo's and his ceilings are probably different as it stands and he could be a player that sticks around in Nottingham for many years to come and with his age Mm. his position where he plays he could be absolute captain material for us yeah I think that's a good point he's the one who could stick around um it's interesting puts about the way Fulham approached the game I think they got high 30s crosses and it's like 37 crosses into our box Mm. and we put four into theirs I mean teams know how to get at us, I guess. Um, just on general about that and set piece set up. I mean, what's going on? Surely after 31 games, we should be better at defending set pieces than, than we are, yeah. shouldn't we? Yeah, it's it's it's, a, it's an integral part of what the professional setup of the team is. And and even more so when you've got someone that's whose job is literally that. Um, but there is still that discrepancy between right lads, we do this on the training pitch and you need to do it on on the actual pitch. And then who is Who's picking up? Who's organising? Is it a noisy team? Does it strike you as a noisy team, the Forest team? No, not not no. really. I don't know if it lacks no. if it lacks leaders, Greg. I don't know. What do you think about it's, that? It's many things, but maybe noisy is not one of them. Well, we, have, yeah. we haven't had a, a, a club captain in a while that, you know, Worrell had a, a 
good run in the championship. But even then, I think Graben was club captain, wasn't he? And then Worrell's mm. fighting for his place as soon as we got in the Premier League. That was obvious. So we do need that that club captain. And I know it's an old kind of like a not as important these days, but I think in a young, almost naive squad like Forrest, we really do need that leader. Mm. Uh, and there's a few candidates that have shown it throughout this season, but we, it does feel like if we have to recruit next year or if we have to kind of bring someone up that we, we do need that leader, that genuine person who's going to drag us through the trenches when we need it. I, th- I think a big thing on the you, pitch, Prox. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Volume. That is a genuine thing then when you're completely, out there Completely. Completely. Even if it's just... Um, mm. it's, it's bizarre because you, 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 I'm not letting any trade secrets out, but because you can see it with your own eyes, where you, it, it, it'd be the source of frustration every time for a manager where... Right, you pick him up. Got him. Got him, boss. Scores a goal. But you picking him up? Oh yeah, sorry. You know, it's like, well, that here's, and I don't think that's changed. I mean, the delivery of, this, of the information might be more digitised and a bit sexier, but it's literally, if you're either zone or marking, you stand here. If someone comes across, you make sure he doesn't get in front of you. Or if you're picking players up, you stick with the players. I think collectively, you look at marking from corners. That that is that has changed significantly. I think over the last twenty or so years, because you now get players. Just holding other players, the ball's coming from there. They're like that. That's not marking. That's not my. That's that's basically attempting to give away a penalty. Um, but sometimes when because there are plenty of comments saying about the matchup between um, uh, was it Tosin Adarabayo and, and Morgan Gibbs White when when even just from a common sense point of view, you're going well, he's miles bigger than he is. So whether Morgan's good in the box or good picking him up physically, he gives away several inches now. There is a thought process because we've done it on a game, a Leeds game. Apologies for talking about Leeds. And Willie Nonto was picking up, uh, who was he picking up? I think it might have been uh, Leicester Leeds or Leeds Leicester. He's picking up a, a, a big a big defensive Leicester player that was in the opposition box attacking. Now, the, the, the school of thought there is that the rest that are doing zonal marking, go and attack the ball. Zonal marking doesn't just mean stay where you are. It means if it comes anywhere near where you are, you absolutely go at it. I think sometimes there's a there's a there's a slight discrepancy with what we understand the zone mark, and is literally I'm staying here so the ball comes anywhere in the area. But if it's there to be won, you are told go and win it because that's that's why you're there to to kind of box off each and every um, um, permutation of where the ball might go. So I think sometimes there is a frustration in that when you do look at big player, little player, big player scores. And you, and as much as we can over-intellectualise football, that will always get on everyone's nerves. You think, why is he marking him? But sometimes the, the bigger picture is about keeping your best headers in the places where the ball may go up more often than not. So I can totally see it. The, the, it doesn't help the fact that you have got someone publicly brought into the team, into the club to say, well, he does that. So then therefore, there's someone to point the finger at now, isn't there? Whereas before it was everyone's responsibility. Now it's what's well, obviously the set piece coaches. But it's, well, no, because he's not picked him up. He's not gone to attack the ball. He's not helped out in that particular situation. There'll always be that gap between what the players are told and what they deliver. The best ones deliver what they're told. The not so good ones make a mess of what they're told and don't deliver on what they've been asked to do. So there is a frustration with that. I, I sincerely hope it is in a case that we're sat here after the last ball. Uh, of the season's been kicked and Forrest look back on it and look down to the figures and it's set pieces that send them down because that'd be criminal to be honest uh thank you very much also to uh Tim Cox for a 10 pound donation uh yeah hope for well people talk about you know switch off from the normal drag of life so hopefully this podcast does help with that and especially today after a nice win and with those donations Mrs Davis will be very happy because I haven't done the food shopping but that's uh, covered fish and chips for tonight so <laughs> she'll be alright with that so thanks very much to everyone uh, moving on to the Spurs game then um, Greg I, I kind of had not not written that one off but I thought you know if we get put it in display and we lose by a couple then that's alright before Fulham but now I look at it and think actually they, they're not in the most sparkling form we can probably go there and get something and you never know even nicking away win that would change everything again i guess for the better if we can do it this is incredible hearing you speak like that talking about an away win at spurs <laughs> what's you never know. what you done what you done with matt um <laughs> yeah. why not i mean they are spursy aren't they i've got um i've got some really good spurs mates actually from nottingham 
who's uh, I'll give him a shout out. His dad passed away uh, the other week, Alan Clark, just a great bloke. So I know all them are going down, uh, Lindsay, Glenn, uh, Tony, all of them, Kaylee, and they're huge Spurs fans. So I absolutely love it if we ever get a result against them because half the village I grow up with, it seems to be Spurs fans. So uh, they'll be nervous. They know that they're Spursy and uh, they've <laughs> always got the opportunity I to mess up, up, haven't they? <laughs> so uh, I'd love to go down there and get a performance, get a point, it'd be incredible. But that fantastic stadium, if you've never been yet, it's just a brilliant place to go and watch football and I think if we got something there, God, that would really set us up for a great run in. And we can you're going do down with That's Steve Allen, Greg. Are you going down oh, with Steve your, Allen? Your mate Steve, God, yeah. I mean, uh, he was telling me what slanderous <laughs> things you were saying to him in the pub before. The, do you want to say that on online or what? Or I did you told my daughter this is the most miserable man you'll ever meet? As he predicts a four 0 win to Spurs. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, uh, he is a uh, relaxed, though. He is a lovely guy, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, he is kind of. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he is. Yeah, why not? You know, it's a good day out now. I know it's ruined a lot of people's plans, this ridiculous late change. But for me, it's personally made it better. So I'm going to have a day in London and uh, completely enjoy it. And you just never know with this Forest team, do you? They'll be really excited about playing their old teammate as well. I'm sure Gibbs White will be relishing the prospect of uh, getting on the pitch with him and showing him that he's a, a better player. And uh, no, it'll be fantastic. I'm really looking forward to it. How do you think the players are viewing it uh, perhaps on the back of the Fulham game? Do they see this as an opportunity now, where a game you can like relax a little bit more after picking up four points from two games? Um Relax, probably the wrong word. I understand what you mean by that. The, the expectation levels are slightly different going into this one. But I think they've got to really strike while the iron's hot. There's, there's a real good vibe about what we've discussed today from what um, Forest fans that were either there in person or watched on TV last night. There's got there's got to be a lot of that that they take forward into the, into the game against Spurs. I mean, undoubtedly, they, they've got players that can cause serious damage. Um, and some defenders that uh, seem to relish booting people up in the air and defending really, really well, which I quite enjoy. Um, so it, it will be by no means, um, I mean, as far away from walk, uh, as from a walk in the park as you could possibly wish for. But Spurs' intentions, of course, have been in the top four. I saw Villa against Wolves uh, at the weekend. Villa looked very, very good. They didn't really have to get out of second gear after half an hour to beat a Wolves side that did okay. Uh, but just weren't as good as Villa on the day. Uh, and Spurs, given that gap between themselves and Man United, it's all about them finishing in the Champions League. And what's linked to that? Angie's position, um, Angie's uh, perception as a coach has come in to try and change the mentality at Spurs. A game such as this, let's twist it on its head. Spurs fans are going into this thinking, well, Forrest may have played well on Tuesday, but we expect to win this. They expect to win this. Um, but I think it's it's a good time given Forrest's confidence and performance levels going into this one, for them to be heading down there, it's no free hit at all. If Forrest have got any aspirations of being an established Premier League side, then a realistic point, at least, against Spurs is where they've got to own. Uh, thank you very much to Derek for the very specific amount of 79 pence donation. Very good of you, Derek. <laughs> It's good. I like that. I like that. Um, what about the overall relegation picture then, Greg? How are you feeling now? We were discussing it last night. Like, even if Luton get a point a game from their remaining matches, only takes them to thirty. It, it's looking good. Are you getting very confident now, or are you are you nervous? Just uh, Brentford can't buy a win, can they? Can I still have really that dream? To go down, can I still have that little dream? <laughs> You know, they played so well at the weekend and still didn't win. And they've they've got a big game tonight, haven't they? But it, it, when you look at those, uh, I think Brentford's running, they're, they're literally playing like Everton, Luton. I'm sure it's Sheffield. I'm sure they're playing pretty much all of them. Um, there could be a surprise. Palace haven't won in 12. It's going to take a hell of a run mm. from ourselves, Everton with a potential points deduction and Luton for... A N other to go down, but mm. if I was a betting person now and with my massive red head on, you'd think it's going to be Luton, uh, who just haven't had enough this season. I'd hope, anyway. <laughs> Obviously, uh, just on the Brentford fixtures. I mean, 
uh, they've got uh, Brighton tonight, I think, then Villa away. And then they've got Sheffield United, Luton and Everton. And I guess <laughs> if they were to lose all three of those, then they'd be in it. But I don't think they will be. Um, for me, Prutz, I kind of feel like mm. what we need to do is just instill that kind of mentality into Luton, like with the fans, where they just start thinking, oh, we've given it a good go, but it's not going to be. And uh, uh, we're not there yet, obviously, because it's only no. three points. But if we can win a couple more games, do the Luton fans start to will to maybe the players too, potentially? Or will they fight till the very last uh, last kick? Um, I mean, potentially. They've got injuries to deal with, haven't they? As, as seemingly every single team across the division has injuries to deal with. But um, what Luton have done, and, and coming at it from a, a slightly more objective way of, of having worked on their, te- their games and the team, it, they're they're a hard club not to like. I think Rob's a very good coach. I think given what they've achieved, not just in the space of the last couple of years, but in the space of the last decade, is 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 phenomenal. Really, you get the sense that Nottingham Forest, as an entity, of course, is a bigger football club. I don't think there's, there's not many, unless you're a Luton Town fan, that would disagree with that. So maybe there is that sense of being a juggernaut that does just kind of say, "Look, calm down, Luton. We'll we'll get nick a couple of wins now, and you just kind of sit where you are." There is there is an element of that. The, the fact that they've got a game in hand, they can seemingly scare teams, but not necessarily get over the line when it comes to these these games where they've been well and truly in it. Um, is, it will be a source of frustration for for all Luton Town fans. But Brentford is a, is a good one to flag up. Everton, I mean, can't buy one at the moment, can they at all? My God, and um. Seemingly uh, another very, very tough season for them, kicking around at the bottom end, even though Everton fans broadly perceive them to be a top 10 team, which I've just never really seen in, in recent seasons. So, like I said, given what I've seen last night, there's enough, for, there's, there's absolutely enough for Forest to be better than Luton, Burnley, and Sheffield United. I'm sorry if that sounds like the ambitions are really low, but given what this season's thrown up, both on and off the pitch. Like I said, I've always said in these in these first few years back in the Prem, it's been above the dotted line. And I, I, I'm not just you don't just say it to kind of play to the crowd here on on a podcast that's full of Forest fans. But yeah, Forest do have more than enough to be one of the teams that's in the Premier League next year. Mm, I think so. I'd still massively take 17th as well, even if we stay up on the last day, just stay in the I, league. I think. Um, yeah, I mean, Greg that's, Wooden, and again, Greg. that's not that's. It's not defeatist though, is it? But maybe I'm trying to be too realistic oh, with that. I don't but... want to go to Burnley. I think to need something. I want a party. I want to be singing Waka Waka like we were last season. Don't make me have a At last Burnley. game this season. Does yeah. anyone go to Burnley for a party? Well, we could. We could be the first. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I couldn't cope with it. I really couldn't. It's It's been painful enough this season. Just give us that day. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, this is very kind of people today. Richard Spray, uh, $5 donation, dessert to go with fish and chips. What do you get for dessert from the fish and chip shop? Like deep fried Fat banana. Fat banana. No yeah. one goes yeah. to the chippy for dessert. No, I'll just, I'll just, I'll no. upgrade my uh, lamb shish kebab from uh, small to large, Richard. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> still very good of you. <laughs> right. I think we've covered all the ground I went to. 712 people with us. Are, so, if you haven't hit like, uh, please. Yeah, exactly. Please do uh, hit that like because uh, it really helps. I promise, even though it doesn't sound like it should, it does. Uh, right. Any other business, Greg Mitchell? A uh, couple of things. Oh, yeah. Someone asked about my shirt. Chief sent it me, the Forest fan from Chicago. It's his Barstool Sports Vineyard Vines thing. So, very happy to uh, receive and wear that for him. Great guy, big Forest fan. And just really like the last four days, the last. It's been manic down that ground. Everyone who was setting up for the displays, we had um, so many volunteers over numerous days for the original display against Palace. And then on, when was it, Bank Holiday Monday? I was a little bit late, I must admit. That's why I was saying I can't take credit. But we had like 40 people down the ground in the trend oh. and setting up the Gibbs White display. And something that used to take a few of us three or four hours, absolutely shattered. By the time I got there, probably like half an hour late, it was pretty much done. It was incredible seeing everyone there, everyone knowing what they were doing. When you get in the trend end these days and, you know, you trust that front row completely because they know what they're doing. And it, it's just so much easier these days to, to get those displays sorted purely because everyone's so willing to help and volunteer. So thank you. It does. Uh, it makes it so much easier. 
Yeah, well done, Forza, and all the all the people involved. Uh, you're doing a great job for the whole club. Prats, anything from you before we go? Um, only because it just jogged my memory because it was in recent weeks, days, and I wasn't. I've not been on for a while. Was Larry Lloyd passing? Which I think um, vivid memories of Larry when he used to come in. And he, I mean, by the, I mean, bless him. In his last years, he'd lost a lot of weight, and he? he was he was kind of a, a picture Norm put up on Twitter. I thought that isn't even Larry Lloyd that he stood with because of how he looks. He looked really, really well. But he used to be this huge fella that used to come in with them. Um, with um, a couple of footballs under his arm to get him signed, and when we were YTs, you'd like you, you need to get the ball launched at it to go and get signed, <laughs> or Larry would like kick the door down, and walk into the home team dressing room, and us young lads, obviously you, you you've got a, a real love of football and a real affinity of football, but because it's everywhere now, um, it was it was unless it was the teams that you had a bit of a fondness for and followed, you didn't necessarily know the man you shouted. Uh, and kind of general consensus was who's this. Big fan of like bullying the lads in the, in the first team dressing room, making them sign stuff. And then I remember Paul Hart going, Are you joking? in Paul's inimitable way, which was basically telling you off. Um, Larry Lloyd, you mean, played for Liverpool, won the European Cup, and like your jaws on the floor thinking, Oh my God. And you'd, and, it, and it's a bit of a link, but seeing people like uh, John McGovern around and then um, obviously Gaz um, and knowing Gaz like we do now is, 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 is your mate who likes to moan about stuff. But still being a European Cup winning footballer is is just mind blowing when it comes to that. And it reminds me of nights like night as like last night when you talk about Forest and being able to dip your toe in and out of what it is. You, you just again that constant reaffirmation of what a ginormous football club it is and where it comes from. And to see someone like Larry pass on who was so big and gregarious and, and fill the room in all senses of the word at one point was was sad to see. And just a reminder, obviously, that um these these heroes get old and and, and frail and, and pass on just as as we all do at some certain stage uh, i'm not trying to end the podcast on a real sour point i'm just saying as a celebration of a fellow that was giant almost both on and off the pitch just farewell to you larry Lloyd. uh good words good words a few people greg asking uh again i don't know if this has been fixed have you asked it before about people donating to forza i think you said the paypal account was a bit ropey is that fixed can they do it now or not I think they can. <laughs> maybe we're not that. Or- maybe we're not that organised. We need some help behind the scenes, maybe. Uh, yeah, the PayPal does work for most people, but some have issues. So I can get the link out there again. It is on a website, though. The website's dead good. It's been put together really well. Absolutely not by me. And uh, there is. A like you don't do anything there, at the moment, Greg. Jesus, you're getting all I... the high fives for you. Turn yeah, exactly. up late. You don't even help it out when you don't know what the website is. Brilliant. Don't worry, that's what the rest of them say as well in the WhatsApp group. I say I'm just there for vibes at the minute. Yeah. So. <laughs> just, you're just the face of it, Greg. I'm like, the face of it. I'm like it's Bez. It's been on the overlap. Him and Gneb going at each other. It's brilliant. brilliant yeah. Oh, have you mate. seen that, have you? Oh, dear. Yeah, yeah. No Gary Neville was telling me about it. I said, have you met Greg? I said, yeah, he's a right lady. You wouldn't tell him from me. I'm going to knock him out next time. I said, <laughs> they, cut, they cut a little bit. Though. I'm not sure I'm allowed to say do. It's his production company that yeah. makes it for Christ's sake. Uh, <laughs> at the very start, I had to correct him on something uh, about our club, and he didn't like it at all. And that got cut, and I think that's what set up the uh, the tension. But I enjoyed it very much. Hopefully, I'll uh, get invited back, maybe. <laughs> When's the next one? Is there one out again, isn't there? There was one out yesterday morning, which was like a Q&A one, which is quite good, to be honest. It was a bit different. We haven't done anything like that before, so check that we- one out. Get on that, Matt. We haven't done us overlap, <laughs> lads, haven't we? haven't done that recently. Still got Prutz to thank for that. That's true, yeah. I yeah, mean, all, all, all cool. I've got is thanks. I mean, I've got no... That's it, literally. All you give me is words, Greg. Words. Uh, hey, I moisturised before coming on today, knowing you were on Prutz. You'll be pleased tonight. <laughs> that is Why? awfully disconcerting. <laughs> Why? Just Why need a better light. It makes me look pale. So someone, someone did ask me why I'm looking like Captain Haddock, but don't worry, I'll get it trimmed. And it isn't dyed. It isn't dyed. Look, it's not dyed. <laughs> it's magical. It's magical. It's the only, my, it's the only hair that I don't dye in my body. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jesus, changing something. Uh, my beard is incredibly itchy, but I can't cut it. I can't shave it until I get a haircut because my hair, hair would just look massive. So I'm going to get that done later. Uh, like that's a, why I look like such a scroff in general. Like a tramp leaning up on a lamppost. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> Last bit from me, moving on quickly, uh, is uh, tickets for the live show are still on sale, I should say. So get your tickets. It'll be a good night. We'll discuss the worst fullback performances uh, uh, in a forest shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Gay Tan Bong's top five games, stuff like that will be on the That's menu, brilliant. I'm Just sure. Bong against Charlton, brilliant. I mean, that could be interpreted <laughs> in so many ways. I mean, does it help watching Charlton? Bong against Charlton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure he's a lovely guy, actually. He seemed like a good He is team, lovely. Maybe. He is categorically yeah. a lovely fella. But, I mean, yeah. everyone could be crap. <laughs> He was good for Brighton. I'll say that. He had a good career. He was. There you go. He was. He was. Right. Uh, and, uh, oh, yeah, that Chris McGrain interview. Not enough people have watched that, talking about academies and stuff like that and what the academy at Forest is like these days is uh, well worth a watch because it sounds like it's a bit different to your days, perhaps. It's all very uh, holistic and one-on-one -on -one kind of stuff. What's no, it like? Here's a quick question. I know we're going to go, but what's it like for your boy at Huddersfield then? Is it a, a world apart from when you were oh, well, I mean, is that, 10 or whatever? Is it well, he's only really dipped his it dipped his toe in doing bits and bobs. It is a, it is a bit different. I mean, you, Christ, you come across kids that have got a million followers on TikTok and Instagram that are all like you get nudge going. Have you seen that? It's no, I don't because I tend not to follow that type of stuff on social media because it's nauseating. <laughs> but um, yeah, there, there is. I mean, he's only twelve. Christ is a baby, so that it's it's um, all very kind and caring and 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 um, motivational, which is great. And my take on it is, is as long as he's enjoying himself, great. I know how cutthroat it is. There's plenty of time for him to turn into an horrible footballer, like we all <laughs> tend to do. Um, but for now, yeah, he's enjoying it. Gets him off his phone, out of the house, and and something something that we've all loved for since we were babies. So yeah, I have, I have nothing but nice things to say about Huddersfield. Good, good. Uh, I mean, as a town, <laughs> that's a difference if I are together. We've been going for an hour. We should stop before we dig out Huddersfield yes. for the next yeah. 15 minutes or so. Where can you get a live show ticket? Uh, you can get that in the description for this episode. Uh, it's in It's in that. I'll put it on all of them. And I'll tweet it out again on our social media at Forest Focus Pod at some point. Right. Uh, we shall be back tomorrow at 12.15. Greg is uh, a warrior this week. He's Ryan Yates this week, turning out again. Uh, and also with Temps, the other warrior of the podcast, because everyone else is on holiday this week. So, yeah, it's been a bit patched up. But, uh, yeah, 12.15, and then Spurs opposition preview or view on Friday, and then post-match on Sunday. So do join us for all of that. Right. What are you laughing at? I know what he's laughing at. He's laughing and at Andy, Andy, Andy Impey, 20, 20 minutes at Derby. Minutes. At Derby, 20 years ago. That's amazing. <laughs> Oh, Even the yeah. forest fans just shouting Cut off, Steve. off, off. <laughs> <laughs> They're the ones you remember, though, aren't they? The ones that, that is brilliant. Also, oh, also the shout of Matt looking like a homeless vicar, which I quite <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> yeah, it's well, it's tough times for the church these days, isn't it? Attendance is a down. Oh, let's not get bogged down in that whole hornet's nest, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, David Prutton, thank you very much. Pleasure. Now, being second choice has never been more fun. Uh, third choice, I asked Lewis as well. Right, that's uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Mitchell, thank you very much. Thanks, Ray. I enjoyed it. Cheers, Prutz. Good to see you again. Pleasure to see you, Greg, my friend. Uh, have a good day, everyone. Enjoy the company. Enjoyed this very much. Do us a favour and hit like you haven't already. I keep saying that. I'm droning on. I'm sounding boring. So have a good day, and we shall see you soon. <laughs>